Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Doug. Uh, welcome to the show. Baguette. Uh -huh. Bonjour and happy new year, fifth wall viewers. From the 12th of January, French artist JR will be kicking off 2018 with an exhibition at Lazaridi's new flagship gallery at the most expensive place to rent on the Monopoly board, Mayfair, West London. Before the doors open, I'd like to use this opportunity to take you on the journey of how this trilby-wearing Frenchman became one of the highest profile artists in the world of urban art. My name's Doug, you're watching Fifth Wall TV. You know that New Year's resolution you made to make the world a better place? Well, why not start by making your Instagram newsfeed a better place by giving Fifth Wall TV a follow? And while you're at it, why not subscribe to this YouTube channel right here, right now? No, seriously, no. Just sub subscribe. Done it? Okay. 12 years ago, I was in the street writing my name to say I exist. JR as an artist exists almost permanently in the spotlight, but despite this, he's managed to stay relatively anonymous. Thanks to his uniform, dark sunglasses and Glastonbury ready trilby, he can still pop down to Lidl relatively unharassed. JR's relationship with the scene began with graffiti. It was only after a chance encounter upon an abandoned camera in a train station in Paris that his life would change forever. He began by printing out A4 photographs of his friends out painting and then pasting them up on the walls around Paris. This laid the foundation for the work he's very much known for today. His 2004 project Portrait of a Generation was the first one that really spiked public interest and for me remains actually one of his most powerful. With this photograph of locals from the Parisian suburban Banlieu, JR displayed a masterclass in subversion, playing with people's preconceived ideas of representation, this simple image demands closer inspection. It's only after the second or third viewing that you realise that the central figure is actually holding a camera rather than a gun, and that subsequently changes your entire understanding of his statement. Following the 2005 riots, he returned to the area armed with a wide-angle 28mm lens, this time his subjects' expressions were caricatures of the media's portrayal of these people. These images were then pasted up around the bourgeoisie neighbourhoods of Paris. This attempt to distort representation remains one of his most prominent themes today. Applying the same principles of subversion, JR did what all good Westerners do when they get a chance. He jumped in a plane, went to the Middle East and tried to fix the Israel-Palestine conflict through art, with his next project, Face to Face. On est stadé, un palestinien, c'est un mec qui se fait sauter sur, euh, sur un marché, qui tue femme et enfants sans pitié. Pour un palestinien, l'Israélien, c'est un soldat. Un soldat qui l'arrête au checkpoint, qui l'humilie, un soldat qui tire sur euh, les ambulances, les civils. In what he very possibly accurately calls the largest illegal photography exhibition ever, he brought people from both sides of the conflict together through photography. Actors, taxi drivers, artists were all pasted side by side on both sides of the wall and through the towns. This time the subjects were asked to pull funny faces, a bold attempt at healing deep wounds. Once in place, the locals viewing were asked to tell who was the Palestinian and who was the Israeli. Rumour has it though this was slightly miscalculated as they decided to do the pasting on what's known as the Jewish Purim festival which is something similar to Halloween and when the Palestinians saw it they thought it was actually the Jews playing a big joke on them so some of the local reactions weren't exactly what JR had been looking for. If this is true then 10 out of 10 for vision, 3 out of 10 for execution but hey we can't all be Banksy can we? Hey this guy looks familiar. At the time, Women Are Heroes would be JR's biggest and boldest project to date. Working from the heart of conflict zones across the globe, the full dynamic range of the artist's vision was now starting to become realised, as JR pulled focus towards women holding together communities whilst men went off and fought war. The favelas of Rio de Janeiro were given a rare and sobering dose of monochrome to their facade. Whilst a township in Kibera, Kenya was brought to life with this 2km square rooftop installation, complete with his own train triptych. I'm not too sure if that's a term, but you kind of get the idea. During its six year run, this project would run from Cambodia to India, from Liberia to Sierra Leone, finally coming to an end in a French shipping yard.
With these projects behind him, JR would now take center stage in the mainstream spotlight as the winner of the 2011 TED Prize. I wish for you to stand up for what you care about by participating in a global art project and together we turn the world inside out. Not only giving him a new platform of validation and exposure, he now had $1 million investment behind him to change the world with his black and white aesthetic. This time the difference was that it was no longer JR taking the photos. He would get participants to send images of whoever they wanted involved, then he would send them back large printouts to paste up wherever he believed right. This empowering move transferred ownership of the project to the people. Meanwhile, he had a customized photo booth truck that would travel the world giving free printouts to anyone that wanted to get involved. We're not an organization, we don't have a direct purpose. Within four years, over a quarter of a million people had participated from 120 different countries. When filmmaker Samam Arbabi noticed there was only one participant from Iran, he took it upon himself to bring the Iranian people to the table printing out 40 protesters that were killed in 2009 when the country saw a wave of disruption in response to an election. JR remains adamant that this project is non-political, instead driven by a desire to bring people from every side of the spectrum together. It may be non-partisan, but I would argue by its very nature it's political whether he likes it or not. One way or the other, Mexico is going to pay for the wall. We will build the wall. We need the wall very badly. The wall. The wall. We need the wall. Since the success of Inside Out, his projects have just gotten bigger and bigger. In fact, you might even say giant. You'll get that joke in a second. From making the Louvre disappear to challenging the border wall between the US and Mexico. If Banksy's the world's most elusive urban artist, I would say JR is probably the most visible. To some distant shore where when they come up the beach or over a bridge or onto a road. From working with Robert De Niro to you 2 the New York Ballet Cruise. And even being invited to be an artist in residence at the 2016 Rio Olympics. JR's biggest budget project took the shape of several huge scale installations of Olympic athletes in motion around the city. In fact, the images were so big, they had to be supported with custom made scaffolding. The results were three dominating features over parts of the city's landscape. Whilst it looks like a large part of the optimistic spirit that the Olympics represent may have left the city, JR's legacy will continue with his arts initiative Casa Amarela, which is set up in Rio's oldest favela. I thought I had it all together. In under 20 years, JR has gone from rooftop tagger to one of the biggest names in contemporary art, all because somebody left a camera in Charles de Gaulle train station in Paris. Not a bad effort, if you ask me. If you do live in London, make sure you head down to Laz's new gallery in Mayfair. Who knows, you might even get a chance to see the man himself and peek under that trilby. If not, I'll do my best to fill in the blanks for you. Till next time, my name's Doug. This was Fifth Wall TV. Bonjour everybody, je m'appelle Doug. Today I will be doing the vlog in the style of JR, the Frenchman from France. What can I do to make my baby understand? Something tells me that I'm dreaming.